Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We left off with Curly here um, making a deal with this demon in order to get his um, his fightiness up. Um, other in other news, let's take a look where everyone else is. So we we ended. Usually I end at the beginning of the kind of round of turns. We ended right there, so it's going to be Fry's turn next. Um, in the underworld, though, we have Weeder, and Weeder's position is. You know, she's she's kind of stacked up, and she's not stacked up in a way that's useful against the person who is the, the big bad down here. And she also can't um, translate her, her abilities to the overworld. I'm not even sure if her cursed sword would work. So she would lose her cubes and possibly the cursed sword. Plus she has this, this uh, arachna to cash in. So she's still kind of in the building up process, even though she's very strong. And she's also in a position to um, stymie Curly, who could win the game rather quickly. Uh, Fries is also in the position to stymie Curly. He's going to move up here. One, two, three. He's got to roll to see if he finds the secret door, even though he's already been there. It's so magical and secret, it's hard to find. And he doesn't, so he's right here. Looking at other places, we have Red Tomato here. He's going to have to face this spider this turn. He's got a chance. Um, He's going to have three dice, and he needs to get four or better. Not a very good chance, but he figures he's kind of got to hurry and get something going. Uh, then you also have Half Pint. Half Pint's likely to let him buy. She doesn't really particularly care if someone beats the Nameless, because that's going to that's gonna take the point away from Curly anyway. So, you know, it just shifts who, who has the point from one person to another. She would actually quite like if someone took it from him, especially considering his position down there. Um, half Pint, for her part, she's trying to head... Let's see, she's got her Panwalker thing. So she could try to get to where they might show up, which is right here. Or she could work towards trying to stop Scoots some more. Scoots is the main person who's going after her dragon. No one else has found any of the special dragon items yet. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should have placed them on the board. There's only three, um, three dragon quests. That could have been a misstep on my part, but I don't know. I, I feel like the Nameless has, the Nameless champion has a lot of um, advantages by having, being able to bypass these servants. They're gonna start piling up as the game goes, o goes on. Uh, Mooney's Aqualad, he's about to the white town, then he's going to have to spend several turns there, uh, two actually, once he gets there, to get his health back up. He really needs to do that because uh, unlike everyone else, especially, you know, he, he doesn't come back to life if he dives. So, you know, he could, like if he turned over this tile, for example, and he actually made a risk, he turned over a tile right here. Um, or I forget where it was. He turned over a tile somewhere. Ah, I think it was over here. And it ended up being a quest. If it had been a monster and he had lost to it, that would be the game for him. Um, so that's kind of his position. Tice is still skipping around trying to get her money up so she can buy those candles here. Um, she's got slow going, but no one really has any reason to get in her way. Uh, so that's good for her. Scoots. Scoots is in a great position. She has the magic broom, which gives her good mobility, and the lightning, which lets her fight monsters pretty easily. I don't think she can use her lightning against the Nameless or the Dragon, and she can't use it in duels, however. So she's going to need to continue to raise her magic ability, and then get the, the Lyre for the Dragon, and then a special, um, a special weapon that she can use against the Nameless, I think. And that's where everyone is. We are, we already moved Fry, so we are on Scoot's turn. And Scoots flew down to this field here and got a, a, a nice little bonus. She um, would have liked to actually go to the castle uh, map tile, but Half Pine is still here. And Scoots really would rather not tangle with her if at all possible. So she went down here, got this excellent, excellent quest, bring a young girl to the white village. It's great for a couple of reasons. One, it gives her this blue cube, another blue cube, if she succeeds in the quest. And two, the quest's goal is right here. So she just has to move, bring this white, this uh, white little girl to this white little village two spaces away, which is an extra cube for her and an extra coin. Both very, very nice. It's time for Red Tomato to take on the spider. This is a rather impatient move, but you kind of got to feel where he's coming from. He just spent 
maybe four or five turns just walking from the castle down to this frog. He really doesn't want to take the long way around even though he has boots which let him go faster. So he's taking the short route. Um, if he beats the spider or if he doesn't, he'll be able to get to the castle on this next turn, um, which will be good for him. And so he's going to roll three dice and he's got to get a four or less. If he loses, he loses two health. And he loses, but that was kind of what he figured would happen. Particularly nice boon just showed up in Z5, this nightmare here. That's the next step in um, Scoot's quest, her, and her quest for the Liar of Orpheus. That is going to change Half Pint's priorities quite a bit. If she gets that Liar of Orpheus, she could probably waltz in and take on the dragon. She's got a good shot at it. Um, does she want to risk it? I don't know. If she loses to the dragon, she's dead. She's out of the game. Same with the Nameless or Der Verdamte. Um, so, yeah, but if she beats it, that's going to take Half Pint down a rather large peg, so I don't think Half Pint's going to want to risk it. Uh, Scoots, for those who don't see her, she's right here, very close, two short hops on her broom, and if she takes her, even if she rolls a one on her broom, that's going to put her here. That's one, two, that's even three spaces away, so she could just walk over there. Well, she's got to get past the servant, so maybe she, two short, short hops on her broom. Interesting situation that's starting to develop in the Unterwelt, uh, Unterwelt is uh, Weeder and Curly just had successive turns. They each found a different dead old spirit that they need to bring to Criterion. So the thing is, um, oh, and they're both seeking power basically right now. They both are trying to power up so that they can better deal with things. Weeder would love to, to hack away at um, Curly if she runs into him. However, she's not. she doesn't seem like she wants to be pursuing him. She wants to spend her time um, lining her own pockets. Um, however, if they both meet in Criterion, which is right here, a rumble is bound to happen. So Curly's probably going to have to decide to not go that way yet. And Fry's against the odds found the secret passage. Uh, he didn't have to wait an extra turn, so he's down in the underworld now. And that is definitely going to keep Curly away from Criterion, I believe. So I made an unfortunate error with uh, Red Tomato, and I'm not. I got to think about how to resolve it. But the king is actually not in the castle right now. He's out, so he's unable to turn in the golden ball to him, uh, which is really unfortunate. I'm. I'm sorry about that, because he, he really risked himself. So I think what I'm going to do, since it's, I, I don't think he would have made that error. Sometimes I let errors I make go, because I think that the actual player would make the same error, given the situation. I don't think Red Tomato really would. So I'm going to rewind, especially since his turn did not affect other people. Um... Yeah, no one's really making decisions based on him. And go back. So he had a turn here with the spider. I rarely do this, but I feel like it's warranted here. Because otherwise, there's nowhere for him to go around there. There's nothing for him. He just lost most of his life and spent all this time for nothing. So a turn on the spider. Um, turn on the bow. Um, so he's back here, so that's two turns. So I'm gonna move three turns for him now. So it's the, the turn moving to the boat, turn on the spider, and then the turn is his turn right now. Uh, where is he going to go? All right, so he ended up going to the Oasis and brought a salt pillar there. I don't know why, um, but I guess that makes it salt water. Is he poisoning the water with making it salt water so it's undrinkable? I don't know what that quest was for. He was supposed to find, bring the salt pillar to the oasis. Oh well, it helped him, it helped to give, uh, gave him a cube and some money. It'd be great if he got two more coins, because then he could buy a cart. Um, be, a lot of people want this cart, actually, but no one has very much money. Um, whoever gets four coins is probably going to be going for that cart, unless it's Tice. And that's going to really help their movement. It gives them six movement. They're limited where they can use them, though. There's certain places they can't use them. I think the mountains, maybe some other places. Um, anyway, I think that's that's a that's a fair exchange for Red Tomato. The reason why he didn't pick up this is if he stops somewhere that's not um, this caravan 
or this oasis in the desert without having the water skin, which is located under this moray eel, um, he will lose health. So Half Pine is going to find it very difficult to catch up with um, Scoots at this point. She had a choice earlier to go either this way and try and cut around this way and uh, save on a secret passage or go this way and maybe be able to catch up to her. If she, if, um, if Scoots had rolled a one and ended up back at Red Tomato's house and Half Pint had been able to find the secret passageway, she would have been able to catch her. She went that way because it seemed like it's pretty, you know, if she missed this chance though. If she had gotten the chance, it, it was a better chance it seemed like. Um, she missed the chance though, so she's stuck in this kind of swamp looking for Scoots. Scoots has a good chance of getting this secret passageway because she's wizardly and so she can see secret passages better. Um, and then can probably just jump away after she takes out the nightmare. So Half Pint's going to have to reassess what she's doing right now. Um, she's she's getting kind of upset though. Curly's searching blindly for power in the Der Unterfeld. Um, ran across uh, a dark creature. It's a good time to look at Der Verdamte uh, to see how its strength is. Right now it has five shadow cubes on it. Each time one of those things are drawn as well as several other things, another shadow cube is going to be put on to Ferdamta. So, um, Curly's rather pretty pleased to be fighting this this uh, particular creature because he can actually beat it with his with his uh, straight up might. Uh, he's got to get a six or better on three dice, and he's successful. So this is unfortunately one that he has to find Tartarus in order to return it, but. Since he's got places to look, there, there are chances that he could find Tartarus, and that could boost his... If he brings this Titan back to Tartarus, it could give him that one red, more red cube he needs to be um, a much stronger contender in duels. Rise has sacrificed a pint of his blood to the Neater Daemon, and he definitely gets the reward. So Fries is even mightier than before. That six is going to turn into a seven. Sure enough, Scoots was able to um, beat that this nightmare, got a blue cube out of it, and the huge bone. So now she's going to be heading over to R3. That's right there. Orpheus isn't home yet. Um, she's going to have to go to this neck of the woods, though. The next step in her nameless quest is over here, so she could spend some time going for that. Um, Half Pint's got to be disturbed, however. It's going to be fast. Uh, if she, It's going to be hard to keep up with her, especially since she lost that Pegasus from Fry's. If she had the Pegasus, she could just jump on her and, and maybe uh, take her down a few pegs but uh, or get rid of the huge bone. Red Tomato went ahead and picked up the quest in the desert anyway, took the hit. He, he would like to um, go here and get a coin and he would like to have another coin as well so that he could buy a cart and stop uh, and be able to move much faster. Um, the interesting thing that happened on his turn though from picking up the quest he got to pick a new tile from the bag. This is what he put down and I just want you to keep that in mind that it was Red Tomato who put this here and I'll let you consider um, once it's revealed what the re his reasons are. Red Tomato has encouraged Tice to go here. She doesn't know whether or not to trust him, however. Here, let's take a look. There's Tice. There's Red Tomato. He's like, yeah, really? You should go there. It'd be great for you. It'll, it'll help you do what you need to do. I don't think she's going to trust him. I will say on a one or two, she does. She, I think, I think deep down Tice wants to trust, but I think um, there's been betrayal in her past, or what she's seen as betrayal. Uh, she does not trust him, so she's going to go north instead. One, two, three, four, five, and she really doesn't feel like she has to worry about half pint at all. Mooney's Aqualad's turn. Red Tomato has, just, has suggested that he go here instead. Now, Mooney's Aqualad is not fully healed, but um, Red Tomato is saying that he should do it now and not delay. I think there's enough trust built between the two that Mooney will do it and find that there is a thief which would have given Tice three gold had she been able to defeat it, which she would have had a good shot. Um, Mooney is going to have a chance at that gold instead. And he gets it. I think Tice is probably feeling pretty down on herself. 
Curly, searching through the Underdark, has found one of the things he was looking for. Thanatos, uh, Thanatos, Thanatos, Thanatos. One of the people who holds the special items that are good against um, Ferdamte. Uh, the sense des Thanatos. Um, that's the fighty one. That's his best one. So we'll see if he can get a five or less on three dice. He gets the scythe. And that is going to really make things um, much more pressing for the others. And what did I say? Five or less? He did not get it. All threes. That's six. Six is bigger than five. And that's going to give Fry's time to catch up. Now, Fry's, this, here we have three people in the underworld. And I, I just want to um, kind of talk this out loud because I'm kind of absorbing it myself. All three of them are red cube types, right? So we have Curly there, Fry's there, Weeder there. Um, we also have uh, Curly, who, if he beats the Ferdomta, wins the game. Right? And he's sitting on one of the tools that are necessary to beat Ferdamta, and the, the tool that's the most useful to the three people who are down in the underworld. Now, Fries has a few decisions. To, he has a decision to make. So, one, he could go and try and get the, the item for himself. All right? What would happen? Two things could happen. Then one thing that could happen is that he could get it. Right? If he got it, then both Curly and Weeder would have a chance of trying to take it from him before he got to do anything else. Okay? Uh, but the thing is, once he has it, he's you know, at 8, 9, uh, 11. He's, he's, he's looking pretty good at that point with the, the scythe of Thanatos. Thanatos. Um, so that's one, one thing. If he doesn't get it, however, they're both going to get a shot at taking it, and then they're going to be the one to beat, and they're going to be difficult to beat. Um, actually, she's not going to be any, any easier or harder to beat, whether she has it or not, but she still could use it against um, Ferdomta. Now, another thing he could do is he could talk it out with Weeder, and they could both decide to try and uh, take Curly out. Curly only has two health left. If they can hit him for both of those health, he is going to be, he's going to lose all his cubes and he's going to be right up there with the nameless. So I think I'm going to have to shut the camera off and have a negotiation. They're going to have to think about all the different possibilities and how much they trust each other and then what would the aftermath be. Fries has made his decision and before I tell you what it is, I have to tell you he's motivated by two things. One. Weeder is not the most trustworthy of people. She also has a weapon uh, that makes her dangerous. Um, two, he's very confident in himself. Uh, lest you forget, me awesome, that is Fry's motto. So he's going to go and he's going to try and snatch the scythe out from under Curly's feet. And we'll see if he can get it. He gets four dice and he's got to get a five or better. And that'll do it. Fries gets the scythe. De Fanatos. Fries has now made himself a marked man. He has the magic stick that'll make all of uh, the underworld denizens' dreams come true, whoever is able to um, hold it in the end. Um, it's Weeder's turn, however, and she can catch up to Fries. She has to decide, though, whether she wants to try and take him on by herself and then have to deal with Curly and Fries, or whether to try to get rid of Curly first. Um, I think she's probably going to go directly at Fries himself. I don't think that's too tough for her, but the, the target has changed now from Curly to Fries. So she's going to initiate a duel. She doesn't have the best chances. She has an 8, and Fries has a... Oh no, she has a 10. Actually, her chances aren't that bad. Fries has an 8. 9, 10, 11. So she's going to get a minus 1 to the number she needs. She needs to get a 7 or better. And she has stolen it from Fry's. That's not going to give her any kind of boost, however. That's just going to mean that she has it. Um, we'll see if she can fend off the other two. It might be a, a pass-the-stick game. Half-Pint's opting to use her four-leaf clover. She's 
fighting one of the nameless guards. It's got a quite a nice um, reward it would give her, and she feels like she would like to be stronger so that she's prepared to take on um, Scoots if she needs to. Scoots kind of her number one enemy right now. Here we go. She needed to get what? She needed to get a three or better, and she was able to do it with the four leaf clover. Otherwise, I don't think she. It would have been a hard one to beat. Curly's turn to try and take the the scythe. He has other plans though. He is going to just go ahead and draw a tile. Unfortunately, that tile doesn't let him go anywhere. So he can move to that tile. I think I gotta see if he can keep moving or not. Fries is not going to hold back though. He's not going to go exploring when the scythe is right there in his grasp. He's going to try and get it. Um, let's see what we have to get. I eight, nine, nine, and she has nine, ten, eleven, or no, eight, ten. So he's got to get a six or better. Not as good a chance as a weeder. And he got a 10, so he failed the duel. He is going, she's going to take something from him. Uh, she can't take any of his items, because her items are, she's full of items. But So she's going to take a chip off of Fry's block. Tomato is going to have to face himself, a doppelganger. So he has to get a 6 or less. Chances are not on his side. That's too bad. And yeah, he's going to lose an experience cube. He's going to choose this green one to lose rather than the blue so that he can keep his bonus dice. Weeder has the upper hand in the underworld, but she also has a tough choice to make. So she has Fries here who is coming after her. She also has Curly there who is, stands to win the game. I think Weeder is still going to take a shot at Fries though. No matter how much I think about it, I keep coming back to that as her most likely move. She could also run, but I don't think she wants to do that. So she's going to roll. She has, uh, I know I keep figuring this out, I think she's one up on Fries. So she's got to get um, a nine or better. Wow, so she, she takes another chip off of Fry's block. And now we're at Curly. Curly is in the under, under belt, under belt. Um, Fry's is almost dead. If he jumps in there and takes Fry's out, Fry's will be gone. Fry's will be back in the, the mountains here with nothing but one of his two horses. He can either choose the horse or the Pegasus. Um, but then Curly would be alone with Weeder. I don't think Curly wants to do that. I think he wants to at least get as much time as possible before that happens. So, question is, does he want to explore or does he want to try to jump in there and take the, the scythe himself? Hmm. I think he wants to explore and get himself a little more able to defend himself. Oh, he's just getting passageways, but at least that keeps him away from the others a little bit. Fries hates this, but he has to run away. If he stays, he's he runs a very real risk of losing everything. And there's just very little chance that he can get what he wants and not get killed in the process. So he's getting out of here. He has speed on Weeder. That's the one thing he has. Two, three, four. Waiter's no dummy. She's gonna go after Curly. She's not gonna let him just waltz off and still be a and swoop in to get the scythe at some later time. She's going after him. Um, her number again. I know you have to hear me figure out her number again and again, but I do stuff in between her turn. <laughs> I, I keep going back to their turns because they're doing a little more than just exploring. But um, I, I forget what the number is, so I keep having to just. So she has her number is ten. His is eight, so she gets a, I think that's only a, a plus one, a one bonus, let's see. Yeah, so she has to get an 11 or better on two dice. And she did it, so he's gonna lose a life, and Curly has gotta be frightened now. He is, he's not gonna be able to sneak away from this one. He's gonna have to run away, I think. 
And Curly ran away. Um, I don't know if you can tell the paths from this angle, but uh, he went one, two, three, four. So the first weeder can get here is here because she got bit in the ankle by those Gorgons. That's going to make it tough. She's got the strength, but they've got the speed. However, Curly seems to be running into a dead end. He had a choice. He could have gone over to here, um, but then Fries could have come and taken him. And so he really, he really doesn't want to lose everything. That would, that would hurt his feelings. I've been talking a lot about the underworld, uh, Unter Unterfeld, because there is an interesting situation down there. But things have been happening up here as well. Um, so Half Pint's kind of, she, she can't keep up with Scoots. So she's decided to just kind of focus on herself, and hope that she can get to Scoots in time somehow. I don't know. I think she's a little bit in denial. Um, Red Tomato's been adventuring a bit. He got hurt. Got some some uh, some tasks, but really hasn't done a lot. Um, Mooney's Aqualad finally got out of rehab and promptly lost one of his new stones to a golem. Scoots has been... Scoots and Tice have both been kind of going pretty quick though. Scoots has been heading this way. She hasn't picked up a lot, but she's trying to get into this area. Um, she has a, a quest goal here, and then at some point Orpheus is going to show up here. Tice is about ready to get her money though. She's got to get past this uh, Servant of the Nameless, which is hanging out at Scoots' house um, before she can do anything. So she's going to move there. That's one, two... I guess it doesn't matter the number of spaces. She's got enough. Fortunately, it's a magic challenge, so... I think that Snake Eyes ought to work no matter what, but maybe not. Maybe it's impossible. You know, according to the numbers, it's one or better. No, that's definitely not going to do it. So she loses a, a health, which she still has three left, which is just as much as Mooney does uh, full power. So she can just continue on and head to the statuette on her next turn. Weeder doesn't, really doesn't want to spend her time chasing Curly around. She wants to explore. She wants to get the, the, uh, Ferdamta out there. If she can beat this, um, Avatar, Ferdamta, their Ferdamta will show up wherever the Chaos Tile is, which I don't think is out yet. Um, so that's a little bit away that that might happen. Does she want to get rid of that pesky, pesky... Hmm. I think she wants to scare the boys a little bit. We'll see. On a roll of one, she'll keep exploring. Yeah, she's going to scare them. If she could go um, this way. One, two. Let's see. If she goes here, she's still kind of got an aim on either of them. If she goes here. One, two, three. One, two. Yeah, then she's got Curly. Uh, yeah, Curly's hold up there. She kind of wanted to spook Fry's out because Fry's is going after Orion. But um, Fry's chances aren't very good. He has to get a three on, what, three dice? Yeah, that's not, not the best chance. So that's where she's going to go. We'll see how Curly handles that. He was kind of hoping she would just not want to bother with him, but she does. Um, we're going to finish up here with um, Aqualad going to see the king. Let's see what... Well, the king's not home, but... I guess the king's buddy will give him a, a special quest. And Aqualad has to find the diadem. It's the Aramite L3. Is she out yet, the Aramite? Where is L, 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 L? Please forgive the darkness. Um, the lights went out, which I think is kind of fitting because we spent most of this session uh, underground, or at least our focus was there. There was some, some stuff going on overground, but it wasn't near as compelling and near as, uh, the drama didn't seem to be there. However, that doesn't mean stuff did not happen overground. So let's get a little sum up of where our characters are now, and then we'll probably be finished for the day. Unless I feel really limber and want to come back. So first, let's look at Half Pint. Half Pint is in real danger of losing her favor now, I think. Um, it's, it's going to take a while because Scoots still has to, um, she still has to move around. But Scoots is moving fast with that broomstick, that stubborn broomstick. As long as she doesn't roll a one, she'll continue to be cruising and soon she'll be facing the dragon. And if she can win, then Half Pint is going to lose that favor. Now, that doesn't mean Half Pint's out of the game though. If you look, Half Pint has the most cubes out of anyone. So if we're looking surely at cubes, um, Half Pint is ahead. 
Unfortunately, how I have it marked up, I'm probably going to have to change this. I, I'm i not keeping into account the um, the straight stat changes. And, you know, the equipment is just numbers. Some of the equipment's more useful than others. So it's not really capturing it, but I'm just trying to get a general feel of how people are doing based on this. And Half Pint's not doing too bad. Her positioning is poor, though. She's not in a position uh, on the map to really protect herself, but then it's it's difficult to catch up to Scoots. Too bad she lost her Pegasus. So Curly, and Curly hasn't accomplished really anything since he went into the underworld. He got stronger, but then he just got beat up. He's really close to dying now, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the next turn, Weeder takes him out. Uh, Curly has really can't get past her. Um, I'm not sure what his options exactly are, but he things aren't looking good. And if you look, a lot of people are getting close on his recipes. None of them are, are too serious. Actually, Half Pint. Yeah, Half Pint I could see taking down the Nameless. Who else? Tice is getting close. Tice is getting close. She's getting her candles. I think the where she needs to bring the candles to are out. I wouldn't be surprised if she got to the Nameless first just because she's faster. Um, but then she, she would have a harder time of beating it because she hasn't really strengthened at all. And she doesn't have really any, she doesn't have beans for equipment. Um, so Fry's, Fry's is kind of in a similar boat to Curly, you know, and I think the three-way between Fry's, Curly, and Weeder could have gone a number of different ways. Um, it just so happens Weeder's the one who won out, which it, you know, it kind of feels good in a way. She was sort of the underdog. She started out in the, well, she was the underdog. She started out in the underdark, um, but maybe that made her more equipped to deal down there. I think I like to think of it as kind of a, a maybe she's like a mole person, maybe uh, in the, um, in the sun, she would be blinded and, and kind of incompetent. But since she's down in her element, she's of the damned, she um, is able to do better down there, and everyone else is at a disadvantage against her. And I think that kind of works, because there's a different sort of way you construct your character and advance your character in the under dark. Not that she was even doing that, though, so maybe it kind of breaks down. Um, so anyway, things are looking good for Weeder. She's, she's hunting Curly down. Um, Scoots, things are looking really good for Scoots. Red Tomato... Uh, I don't know. He he and Mooney, and who else is kind of in that boat? Yeah, Red Tomato and Mooney are kind of in a similar place. They haven't really done anything too impressive, but they seem, you know, they're not really in a horrible position. Their um, success kind of, I think, is based on everyone else's failure still, though. They haven't really done anything that it seems like they can, they haven't bettered their position very much. Yeah, that's it. It's dark in here.